people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. I'm your host Shivangi Mishra with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. As the Taliban control extends in Afghanistan, the life of women in the country is getting tougher. Afghan women entrepreneurs are facing devastating setbacks due to the Taliban's ban on beauty salons, resulting in closures of 12,000 businesses, leaving 60,000 women unemployed. These salons were not just livelihoods but safe havens. Meanwhile, U.S. officials engaged with the Taliban discussed women's rights but concerns persist over the situation. Afghan women's future hangs in the balance, with hopes for a brighter day when dreams can be pursued without fear and limitations. Amidst the chaos in Afghanistan, the dreams and efforts of Afghan women entrepreneurs have shattered once again as the Taliban has forced a ban on beauty salons for women, leaving an estimated 12,000 businesses to close and more than 60,000 women jobless. For these women, their salons were not just source of livelihood, but also safe spaces outside their homes. Desperate and facing limited options, some women staged a rare protest only to be dispersed by water cannons. بسیاری که آلت بعد از سر ما زنان در افغانستان دخترها زنان در افغانستان فکر کنین زندانی میشیم کل ایام نانوار خانواده ولی از خدا چرا تو میکنن اینا ما هیچ از چرت فکر از دور نیستیم 24 ساعت تشویش ما هیست که چطور شویم چی کنیم خانواده ما چی بخورن کجا بریم Meanwhile, U.S. officials are engaging in talks with the Taliban, including discussions on women's rights. Time and time again, the United States has urged the Taliban leadership to treat women at par with the men and accord them all the rights that are human and are advisable by the international community. The Taliban's return to power after the withdrawal of NATO and U.S. forces has brought immense challenges for Afghan women. This does not indicate any uh, change in policy uh, of the United States. We have been very clear is that we will uh, engage uh, with the Taliban uh, appropriately uh, when it is our interest and in, in our interest to do so. Uh, this does not. Uh, this is not intended to mean any kind of indication of recognition or uh, any kind of indication of normalization or legitimacy uh, of the. Uh, of the Taliban, uh, the comments I made yesterday very uh, uh, clearly about our continued concerns about uh, backsliding in uh, Afghanistan, the egregious human rights abuses that the Taliban is undertaking, their marginalization of Afghan uh, women and girls, uh, all of those things and, a new, and, 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 uh, and many others continue to be of immense concern to the United States. The situation is complex, with the Taliban claiming to respect women's rights according to their interpretation of Islamic law and Afghan culture. However, the ban on salons and other restrictions, including closing high schools and universities to women, have raised concerns about the future of women's rights in the country. As the US engages in talks and efforts to stabilize the Afghan economy, women's rights remain a critical issue on the table. The world watches closely, hoping for a future where Afghan women can once again pursue their dreams and aspirations without fear and limitations. Moving on. In the aftermath of a tense border breach in 2020, China's actions have left indelible scars on its relations with India. The breach of trust and unprofessional conduct by the Chinese PLA strained ties between the two nations. And now, having endured adverse trade and diplomatic consequences of fostering strained relations with India, 
China is desperately seeking to mend the soured relations. India, on the other hand, however, has firmly held its ground, demanding resolution of the border issues first. Blame squarely falls on China's actions, which have had far-reaching consequences on the bilateral relationship. While China's growth story has been impressive, no one can deny the fact that it has accumulated more adversaries than friends in its journey. Vietnam, Taiwan, Japan, Australia, the list goes on. Chinese modus operandi of claiming others' waters or territories has been one major cause behind thorny relations with the most. In line with same, China has unilaterally sought to control Indian territory in large parts of India's north and northeastern regions. The aftermath of the border incident in Ladakh in 2020 cast a long shadow over China-India relations. And now when Beijing attempts to address the fallout, a complicated web of diplomatic exchanges and underlying tensions has emerged. China, eager to move forward, emphasizes the potential benefits of deepening trade ties. However, India remains adamant, insisting on resolving the lingering border issues before any further cooperation can take place. Diplomatically, we have been very clear. We have been very clear with the Chinese that we will not tolerate, we will not countenance attempts to unilaterally change uh, the line of actual control. Uh, and that uh, so long as they continue to seek to do that and if they uh, have built up uh, uh, forces which uh, in our minds constitute uh, a serious concern in the border areas, then our relationship is not normal. And the abnormality of that has been in evidence in the last few years. Meanwhile, the military commanders continue to engage each other. India's diplomatic position has been proven right on multiple occasions. Recently, China displayed another provocative action by issuing staple visas to Indian athletes from Arunachal Pradesh. India, which asked its citizens to return from the airport, lodges a strong protest against Beijing. Our long-standing and consistent position um, is that there should be no discrimination or differential treatment on the basis of uh, domicile or ethnicity in the visa regime uh, for Indian citizens holding valid Indian passports. Um, it has come to our notice that stapled visas were issued to some of our citizens uh, representing the country in an international sporting event in China. Um, this is unacceptable and we have lodged our strong protest, uh, protest with the Chinese side, uh, reiterating our consistent position on the matter. And India reserves the right to suitably respond to such actions. The breach of trust has deeply impacted India's sense of security and national sovereignty, making it difficult to overlook the past. Amidst the heightened tensions and rhetoric, the international community closely watches the developments. While China may try to project an image of stability and progress, the unresolved issues continue to loom large, affecting the prospects of any meaningful reconciliation. For India, rebuilding trust with China requires concrete actions, accountability and sincere efforts to address the core concerns. The wounds of the past cannot be brushed aside with empty promises of economic cooperation. As the talks between the nations persist, the road to reconciliation remains fraught with challenges. The trust deficit born from China's actions demands patience, understanding and a genuine commitment to resolving the underlying issues. The path to rebuilding ties is complex and uncertain, but until China acknowledges the gravity of its actions and takes meaningful steps to address the concerns, the road to reconciliation will remain an arduous journey. Moving on, severe flooding from heavy monsoon rains has left villages in Pakistan struggling to cope. 
The deluge has submerged fields and homes, forcing residents to rely on boats for transportation and evacuations. With weather authorities predicting continued monsoon drains in Balochistan, Upper Sindh and Punjab, the situation remains precarious. Last year's devastating floods linked to climate change wreak havoc across the country, causing crop damage, infrastructure destruction and claiming many lives. Severe flooding from heavy monsoon rains has left villages in Pakistan struggling to cope. The deluge has submerged fields and homes, forcing residents to rely on boats for transportation and evacuations. With weather authorities predicting continued monsoon rains in Balochistan, Upper Sindh and Punjab, the situation remains precarious. Last year's devastating floods linked to climate change wreaked havoc across the country, causing crop damage, infrastructure destruction and claiming many lives. ਤੇ ਬੜੀ ਮੁਸ਼ਕਲ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਮਾਲ ਜਾਨਵਰ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਸਹੀ ਸਾਡੇ ਸੀ ਨਾ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਸਾਈਡ ਦੇ ਲੋਕ ਵੀ ਆਏ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਲ ਨਾ ਐਂਜ ਬੇੜੀਆਂ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਆਏ ਨੇ ਮਦਦ ਸਾਡੀ ਕੀਤੀ ਨੇ The recurring nightmare of destructive floods in Pakistan has once again exposed the vulnerability of its communities to extreme weather events Monsoon rains an essential source of water for agriculture can quickly turn into a catastrophe when they exceed the region's capacity to manage them. The resulting floods disrupt lives, displace people and put immense pressure on limited resources and infrastructure. Last year's flood disaster, which affected millions of people and caused widespread devastation, has been attributed to the impacts of climate change. Global warming is leading to more frequent and intense weather patterns and Pakistan is no stranger to its consequences. Rising temperatures contribute to increased evaporation leading to heavier and prolonged monsoon rains followed by erratic dry spells that exacerbate drought conditions. This year is no different. ਕਾਜ਼ੀ ਕਾ ਇਨਜ਼ਾਮ ਬਹੁਤ ਗਲਤ ਹੈ ਯਾ ਦੇਖੇ ਨਾ ਮੋਟਰ ਚੱਲਦੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਮੋਟਰ ਕੇ ਸਾਥ ਪਾਣੀ ਨਿਕਲਦਾ ਹੈ ਥੋੜੀ ਸੀ ਬਾਰਿਸ਼ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਗੱਟਰ ਸੇ ਪਾਣੀ ਬਾਹਰ ਆ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਇਹ ਵੀ ਦੇਖੇ ਨਾ ਗੱਟਰ ਸੇ ਪਾਣੀ ਬਾਹਰ ਆਤੇ ਹੈ ਤੋ ਫਿਰ ਵਾਮ ਕਾ ਗੁਜ਼ਰਨਾ ਬਸਰਨਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਮੁਸ਼ਕਲ ਹੋ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਲਿਹਾਜ਼ਾ ਇਸ ਕੇ ਹਮੇ ਚਾਹੀਏ ਕਿ ਯਾ ਮੋਟਰ ਕਾ ਇਨਜ਼ਾਮ ਅਚਾਓ ਮੋਟਰ ਜੋ ਮਰਜ਼ੀ ਖਰਾਬ ਹੋ ਜਾਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਗੱਟਰ ਸੇ ਪਾਣੀ ਬਾਹਰ ਆ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਮੈਂ ਵੀ ਆ ਵੀ ਇਧਰ ਕਸ਼ਤੀ ਮੇ ਆਏ ਔਰ हमारे पास कोई भी रास्ता नहीं है इधर भी इस, इस जगह पर मुंतकिल हो सके हमारे पास अभी कोई रास्ता नहीं है इन द वेक ऑफ सच कैलामिटीज कम्युनिटीज स्ट्रगल टू रीबिल्ड देयर लाइव्स एंड द बर्डन ऑफन फॉल्स डिसप्रोपोर्शनेटली ऑन द मोस्ट वल्नरेबल इंक्लूडिंग वुमेन चिल्ड्रन एंड द एल्डरली livelihoods are lost and efforts to alleviate poverty and improve living conditions are set back significantly additionally the damage to agriculture hampers food security affecting not only the affected areas but also the nation's overall well-being addressing the challenges posed by climate change and mitigating its impact on vulnerable regions like pakistan requires a comprehensive approach the country must strengthen its disaster preparedness and response capabilities while investing in resilient infrastructure and sustainable land and water management practices time now for asia this week the stories from across the continent Thousands of Israelis opposed to the judicial overhaul sought by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu gathered in protest this week few days after parliament passed the first of the changes trimming supreme court powers to overrule government actions and raising fears for the integrity of Israel's 75 year old democracy 
Earlier, Israel's president urged both sides of a dispute over moves to overhaul the judiciary to refrain from violence, using the occasion of Jewish fast on Thursday to appeal for reconciliation as protesters vowed for more demonstrations. The plans being pursued by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his right-wing government have spurred months of unprecedented protests, opened up a deep divide in Israeli society and strained the loyalties of some army reservists. Demonstrations for and against the judicial overhaul were on hold for Tisha B'Av, the first day mourning the destruction of two ancient Jewish temples in Jerusalem, blamed by tradition on needless infighting. North Korea showcased nuclear-capable missiles and new attack drones in a large military parade staged in Pyongyang for leader Kim Jong-un and visiting delegations from China and Russia, North Korean state media reported last week. The widely anticipated parade on the night of July 27th commemorated the 70th anniversary of the end of Korean War celebrated in North Korea as Victory Day. Still photographs released by official KCNA showed leader Kim Jong observing the parade with the Chinese and Russian delegations, including Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shogu, who were the first such visitors to North Korea since the COVID-19 pandemic began. The KCNA photos also showed North Korea's latest Wasong-17 and Wasong-18 intercontinental ballistic missiles which are believed to have the range to strike targets anywhere in the United States. Taiwan's armed forces conducted a large-scale anti-landing drill on a beach near the major Taipei port just outside the capital despite occasional rains and winds brought by passing typhoon Doksuri. Hinting at China's military posturing towards Taiwan, President Tsai Ing-wen, who oversaw the parts of the exercise, called for increased drills and planning amid Taiwan's ever more complicated future threats and challenges. The exercises simulated the repulsion of an enemy force with ground troops and tanks amid high military tensions with neighboring China. Parts of Taiwan's main annual Hang Kuang exercises and air raid drills that started last week were disrupted by the storm as authorities cancelled some exercises, citing safety concerns and the need to make preparations for the typhoon. To help delivery riders cool off during the UAE's scorching summer heat, three solar-powered and climate-controlled cabins were launched in Abu Dhabi, allowing the riders to recharge in between their orders. The environment-friendly cabins provide seating, water dispensers, air conditioning and mobile charging facilities for the riders during their 10-hour shifts. The initiative, part of the Summer Together campaign, was launched by the Joint Committee for Traffic Safety in collaboration with food delivery company Talabat to provide shelter for workers while supporting the country's green goals. The committee said expansion plans in this regard will come along in the line with country's sustainability vision as it prepares to host the COP28 climate summit in December. The UAE previously announced a ban on working in open spaces and under direct sunlight from 12.30 to 1500 hours from mid-June until mid-September to prevent work-related injuries or illnesses. Moving on, New Delhi, the Indian capital city, dazzled as it hosted India Qatar Week. A glamour-filled event where models and actors adorned stunning creations by renowned Indian designers. India's fashion industry is rapidly gaining global recognition and this Qatar week showcased the nation's fashion prowess. Let's delve into the highlights of the India Qatar week held in New Delhi. Last week, Indian Qatar week in New Delhi turned into a spectacular event as Bollywood celebrities and prominent fashion designers showcased Indian royalty through their exquisite creations.
Aditi Rao Hydri, a popular Bollywood actress, raised the ramp as the show stopper, donning a handcrafted lehenga and an ivory blouse adorned with embroidery and mirror work designed by the renowned Ritu Kumar. Another mesmerizing highlight was the presentation of the Mogra collection by fashion designer Sunit Varma, which captivated the audience. The collection drew inspiration from the traditional decorative arts of India, adding an enchanting touch to the event. This year's India Couture Week marks its 16th edition in the Indian capital and will culminate on August 11th. I believe that we should wear the clothes and the clothes shouldn't wear us. Um, it should not be a pressure and a burden. Um, we should have fun with the clothes that we wear. And I think it's so important to love yourself and love what you wear. And I think that's what truly makes you shine. Hot couture, known as high sewing, involves the creation of exclusive, custom-fitted garments entirely handmade. For those well-versed in the Indian fashion industry, it comes as no surprise that a tremendous amount of meticulous effort goes into crafting various garments. Although Indian designers are just starting to gain the recognition they deserve in the world of hot couture, the textile and apparel industry in India has been robust, covering a wide range from fibres, yarns and fabrics to finished garments. The ready-made garment exports from India are projected to grow at a compound annual rate of 12 to 13 percent, exceeding 30 billion US dollars by the year 2027. We've had a great time doing it and uh, you know there's something wonderful about Indian textiles. They lend themselves to almost anything. So we've enjoyed doing the show. We've enjoyed being able to put up on a ramp a collection that would have otherwise during the COVID sat in go-downs. The textile sector is the second largest employer in India following agriculture. During the financial year 2021-22, India's textile exports reached a record high, surpassing 44 billion US dollars. The industry's growth is fueled by several factors, including abundant raw materials, competitive manufacturing costs, and the availability of skilled labor. Additionally, there has been significant foreign direct investment in the textile industry amounting to 1522.23 million US dollars between 2017 and 2022. The government has played a crucial role in supporting the industry with initiatives such as production linked incentive scheme which has been allocated 10683 crore enhance the industry's global competitiveness. With India's strong economic foundation and a growing middle class, the fashion industry is projected to become more organized and lucrative. Indian fashion industry is growing leaps and bounds. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. People have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect.